Welcome to We Are Libertarians. I am your host, Chris Spangle. We Are Libertarians brings you all of the irreverence modern politics deserves. Think of us as the love child of the National Review and Mad Magazine. We explain to you what the hell is happening in our world today and how we can fix it by thinking differently. Please be sure to rate and review us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, share this episode with friends, and support us through PayPal or Patreon at wearelibertarians.com. We are supported by listeners like you, so $1 per episode by pledging $5 a month help, uh, helps us grow. We are always taking your questions and comments via email at editor at wearelibertarians.com. If you are new to the program, we catch up for the first 20 minutes or so and then deep dive into analyzing current events in society from a libertarian perspective. This show is for adults by semi-adults, so please be warned, the language is strong and offensive. We're joined, uh, I'm joined by my valiant co-host, fresh off of his successful interview with Abdul Hakim Shabazz. Is successful a bit strong? I, uh, I, I, w- I was interested to hear what you thought, if it went over okay. Uh, you did great. Did okay? Yeah, everybody else, not, not good. Really? Abdul did fine, as as he will tell you. He's fantastic. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so if you are listening uh, to this now, Indianapolis, check out uh, Greg on uh, WIBC at 2 p.m. on Saturday. Yeah, discussion um, on social media and the effect it's had on society. Yep. And uh, also with us is Kat. Kat, how are you doing? Hello. I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, it's so nice to have you here. Uh, the other cat is joining us. Mittens just jumped on the table. and uh, Mittens prompt- is banned from last episode. Promptly showing her asshole to the cameras as she does every episode. Mm. Uh, speaking of assholes, my, uh, <laughs> my little buddy, uh, Jeff Vibbert, is here. Jeff, how are you? I'm doing great, Smangle. Thanks for having me back on. I'm surprised that you would lower yourself to our level of show business now that you're on such a big plane. Hey, for the common man, by the common man. <laughs> Jeff, of course, left uh, the day job and now is working at Barstool Heartland and does a great daily video series called uh, Things You Saw? Pissed. What is it? Things Pink. You Pissed. That's <laughs> it. That's it, Cat. Blood. Yeah. <laughs> things You Was Pissed. Was the water running? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, things you missed. Yeah. So, uh, how do people follow you if they want to watch that? Uh, at the Jeff Vibbert, or you can go to the Barstool Heartland Twitter, Barstool Heartland Facebook. Find it there. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, seven a.m. Uh, now, Cat, everybody follow at Cat and Agnos while we're getting plugs in. You make sure to right, get yours in right. right now, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank so you. She's she's very uh, she loves attention. Yep. And if then go follow at the Jeff Vibbert. If you're watching the video, <laughs> then you can see Cat playing with her hair. She's constantly. I don't know. Grooming. It, it's very fun to have uh, her around, but she's very particular about her looks. Yes. Of course. Shallow. So am I. Right. Also, uh, of, of you know, very handsome, uh, Jeff Fibbert. You're looking, you're looking good. You're looking swole these days. I think I'm just gaining weight. You're getting <laughs> all right. I was being nice. You're getting a little fat. That's fat shaming. Chelsea, yeah, that's fat Chelsea, shaming, Chelsea, Chelsea Clinton does not approve. <laughs> you just spiced him. I thought this was a libertarian podcast, and you're fat shaming me. Yeah, of course. I wish my cat would stop fucking with my microphone. Get out that, of here. D- the cameras picked that up. Uh, well, you just threw your cat. Call, call PETA. <laughs> yeah. So she's she's caused so much problems. Yeah. Um, I saw the video. The videos are very nice. I think it's because, as Tad Western describes your job, you just drink beer and shout, Saturday is for the boys. <laughs> Saturday is for the boys! <laughs> Barstool, obviously part of the Barstool Sports Empire, which we love. Greg. Oh, absolutely. They are, uh, they're, they're hilarious. I can't lie. And it's good to see Jeff uh, getting to play such a vital role. Well-deserved yeah. uh, inclusion in a role as it's expanded. Uh, now as he's... <laughs> killed it. He's fi- fighting gnats in my apartment. Sorry. That was a flea. <laughs> Last episode, Kat told us about uh, her most successful boyfriend, which was a guy who brought what to school? M- uh, mustard gas. <laughs> right. So Chemical warfare. <laughs> li- literally two mornings later, she's back in uh, Elkhart, Indiana. And what were you doing? So I went to IHOP with a friend. First mistake. Um, and then <laughs> we were eating and all of a sudden I heard, excuse me, are you Kat? And I look up and I see a guy who has hair about the same length as mine, full goatee and a beanie on. And I'm like... Yeah, I am. Now, I thought this guy was going to um, kill me, but, <laughs> right, but... Theoretically, uh, he would have already done it if he had, you know... That's Well, he probably had to make sure it was me, yeah. but um, I thought he was one of my many haters. <laughs> but he was like, it's me, Mason, your boyfriend from seventh grade. And I'm like, Ugh. He's like, you <laughs> talked about me on your... He's at a radio show, but he was like, you talked about me on your radio show. And I was like, oh my God, I did. 
<laughs> How's it going, man? And uh, he's Sorry doing about that. so well. He uh, is a manager of a landscaping company, and nice. uh, nice. he's finally saved up enough money to move to Colorado. Very nice. And I asked they love him mustard for, gas in for Colorado. Right. What particular note? Well, I asked him. I said, "Oh, do you like to ski or snowboard?" He's like, "Yeah," and well, you know, and gestured to his hair. Weed. So I'm assuming <laughs> a lot of weed. Do marijuanas? <laughs> right. So, wait, he had mustard gas? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> clearly he didn't listen to the last was episode. He, no, I mean, I no. saw parts, but why? Was he so, like a World War One pilot? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, we had a, uh, we were doing a unit on the Holocaust. We had to bring in a project uh, that had to do with it. Yep. I wrote a song to Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer about the Holocaust. <laughs> and uh, Okay, how'd it go? Started early. Well, I'll sing it in a second, but my boyfriend <laughs> brought um, mustard gas. Yeah, and had the kids smell it in the parking lot. Made it, twenty mm-hmm. for twenty five cents. For twenty five cents, it was great. If my calculations are correct, this will create. Oh no, it's choking mustard <laughs> gas. <laughs> <laughs> Why so serious? <laughs> Terrifying. You yeah. literally dated the Joker in middle school. But the school. song I wrote was um, extremely offensive, but I got an A. Well, I'm proud of you. Well, Thank you. I want to hear it. Yeah, if it's yeah. So it offensive. went like this. <clears throat> <clears throat> he said the. G- oh, I'll start from the. Yeah. Whatever. So he said the Jews are to blame for his oh. failure. It doesn't make a difference if they did it or not. I've got the... It's about Hitler. I've got the <laughs> Nazis and that's a lot for revenge. Bow down to me now. Whoa, he's killing Jews. Whoa, <laughs> Hitler's You sang this it. in class? Take off your star. He's coming after you. Yeah, it was a great... I'm, we had to do a creative project. You de-starred him. It was that great. Oh what, my 14 god! Fourteen year old kid wrote that. What now year I'm a was genius. this? Two thousand. I don't know how old just, I am. Uh, Twenty. Twenty eleven. I blacked out. Twenty eleven. Uh, I can't <laughs> believe. I was, I was focusing on the on the live stream. Did I just hear a song about killing Jews? <laughs> yes. And Greg didn't sing it. <laughs> I didn't write it. Hey. It's the first I've heard of it. For the record, I, I can't wrote believe that it's not on the Billboard charts. For the record, <laughs> me top top one hundred. Um couple weeks peaked but for the record i wrote that for a class project okay so i don't want people to think that i'm actually what did your teacher say they thought it was great because like she cheered she clapped she (laughs) cheered she started hailing everybody started (laughs) marching down the hallway no No, she showed me her uh, war memorabilia from her great grandfather it's great no (laughs) did she whip out the old my grandfather died in the tower joke oh my no her grandfather did the kill no but uh (laughs) so did the gun tower it was such a strange now that i think about it i mean that was only 2010 2011 you could that could not fly nowadays oh my god that kind of project you sang an anti-semitic song to I'm, Bon Jovi, well, an American hero. But I was singing it about the Holocaust. Like, I wasn't promoting it. You I know what I'm better. saying? I feel like it's like those, like, theater rules. You can be really offensive. It's just like, it's for theater. Exactly. <laughs> okay. It's for right. the exactly. arts. Yeah, like, right. you could sing a song about slavery if you're, like, doing a unit on slavery. Swing okay. You're, low. Okay. No, 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 no. no like you're that. digging yourself into like a in hole. Like in theater. Just you know stop. what I'm saying? Yeah, like in hey. theater. I got an A plus. No, we had to. I got now today. Either plus. you got to write, like, make a video, like, write a poem, write a song. You About just, the Holocaust. <laughs> yeah, it was just something. So, like, some people did like a what poem. What a lesson plan. Honestly, it was really creative. But this one girl like did a poem about Anne Frank, and like, I just chose that that route. <laughs> you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna. I'm going to do a Weird Al Yankovic version well, but, of Living on a Prayer about the Holocaust. But here's the, the thing. Here's the thing. I didn't sing the beginning part. It was pretty like in, like educational because it was like, Hitler tried to be an artist living on the street. He's out for to You know what I mean? So I was telling his story. You like, were. He tried to be an artist. He his failed. rise to fame. He, started, he said the Jews are to blame for his failure. Yeah. It doesn't make a difference if they did it or not. Got the Nazis and that's a lot for revenge. Bow down to me. I don't know how 14, this isn't on your YouTube channel. Honestly, <laughs> hey, you would be huge on 4chan poll. I think that's a great historical song. I absolutely do. I think it should be sung in schools every year. <laughs> <laughs> that should be we'll on. Go that far. Yeah, I cannot believe you wrote a song about the Holocaust at 14. Yeah. God bless you. So- oh my you. God, that is. Stunning. And for the record, I have two Jewish friends. So. <laughs> oh, then, uh, Chris, you're clear. I'm, I'm fine. Not racist. <laughs> right. Not right. anti-Semitic. <laughs> All right. Lahayim, dreidel, dreidel. Before we go any further and uh, end up wrecking the show, Catanagnos um, echoes. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, we want to talk to uh, talk to you about our sponsors who are bringing you this episode of We Are Libertarians. <laughs> Maybe just, not. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, that's a good plan. Yeah. Let's let's just let's give put some, that at the end. Let's give some space. Uh, let's give just just a little bit of space here before we get to the sponsor. <laughs> yeah, 
After the Hitler song. Not too far, uh, I'm sorry. Not at all. Not at all. That is very fitting no, for this podcast. you're not the right person to ask that question That's of. fair. <laughs> That's fair. I wasn't offended, so... I think you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, you work for Barstool Heartland. Is there anything off limits of Barstool Heartland? Being not patriotic. Not drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sobriety is frowned upon. All very good points. Mm-hmm. He's uh, suspiciously quiet and displeased. Let's let's uh, yes. read let's read a listener letter. Okay. Let's let's talk about the listeners let's here. Let's do for that. Second. Yeah. So uh, as you know, we do a little segment here on the show called Dear Leader. Where we take questions for the audience, and this is not so much a question as much as a comment from Andrew at the Andrew Bowman. I don't know why he's at the Andrew Bowman because I've never heard of another Andrew Bowman, let alone this Andrew Bowman. So, but he is the one. He is the Andrew Bowman. There will be no substitutes. Uh, he says, "Thank you, we're libertarians, for putting episodes on YouTube. Much appreciated for the ability to listen while quote unquote working." I don't know what the quote unquote wall working means. I'm shocked. So they like would block audio like Stitcher? Maybe. But he can listen to YouTube? Couldn't he just download it on his phone? I, Do iTunes or Google Play? So I found out that there are a ton of people who go and listen to podcasts on YouTube. And really? that is that is their podcast player. I know that uh, that's the first I'd heard of that, or it would ever have occurred to me to do that. Like I've exactly. downloaded audio and like ripped it from YouTube to like, you know, listen to a speech or something like that, but I've never like streamed it. So he's never listened to the show until you put it on YouTube? Exactly. That's what he... Yeah. I don't know. What did he search? He searched... Uh, <laughs> Hitler did nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah. The point that I would like to make is that I, dear leader, always providing, mm-hmm. have taken every single one of our episodes and put them on YouTube. Thanks. That to was an unbelievable effort. Effort. Yeah. Unbelievable. A lot of effort. It was a f- 300 pieces of audio that we put up on yeah. YouTube. This is just ridiculous. This is this is you're just reading this letter so you can plug your YouTube. Page. That's exactly right. Thank you for calling me out, <laughs> Jeff. Uh, and so go and check that out. We're also doing high quality uh, video. So part of part of uh, we've we've listened to your feedback a little bit, and uh, so many of you want to share various pieces of the show with your friends to try and uh, wait uh, get them woke. Yeah. And uh, you just don't want to share the first 20 minutes or so which with all the inside stuff. So what we're doing is we're extracting the video segments of each segment. So like last week we extracted the communism part, the Mueller part, and the social media part. Put that up on YouTube so you can share that with your friends. They can watch it. And then we also have the full show and then a few smaller clips. So go and check out our YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Share that stuff with your friends. We're just trying to make uh, make it easier for you to get at us and share our content with your friends. Slide in DMs. And uh, yeah, yeah, slide in DMs. And also go check out the Richard Spencer episode that we did. Um, I don't remember. It was Jeffrey Tucker versus Richard Spencer. The alt right has been all over that post. We've been called the N word. Were were Greg? You're very gay. I didn't know if you knew that. They called me the N word after that. No, no, they called you the F word. The, oh well. The, the, we got called all kinds of foul language. There's, Did we really? There's Who's, like 15 posts on there that are on unbelievable. What page? On the YouTube channel. Oh really? From so the I can audio go troll. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'll go get some alt writers. So go check it out. Uh, and uh, libertarians are a joke, according to That's them. That's stunning because we're about as we've given them as fair of a shake as any news outlet that exists, in my opinion. Uh, after reading that, never again, because these people are just straight up racist Nazis. Well, God. Yeah, it's like they wrote a song. All right, you have a point, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I. Cat, do you know him? <laughs> Did you date him in eighth grade? Was I this the fall, so. the rebound guy? Yes. yes. <laughs> so, all right, let's 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 get into the ad reads. We're going to talk about a great sponsor of We Are Libertarians, Eight One Two Farms. Now, Eight One Two Farms is near and dear to our heart, but also the heart of Jeff Vibbert. Love Eight One Two Farms, uh, Jeff has a podcast i was i'm going to be your next guest yep once uh, you edit, next week yeah, yeah next week uh so go check out the jeff vibbert podcast v-i-b-b-e-r-t and uh 812 farm sponsors you guys too for sure they're amazing interesting how that happened did you steal my sponsor they came to me we got sponsor cucked they've been <laughs> they've been with us since day one what well day one after no we were day I, zero I, I mean well i'm just saying uh they've Followed the podcast since day one. Oh, okay. Since Greg. episode one. Is there an apology out here? I would say ding, there's... Ding, ding. It, we're not quite there. We haven't been able... We don't have the documents. We're going to need to actually need get the, the documents to have Wait, this. you want me to apologize to you for... Yes. No. Bro code. 
podcast bro code. Yeah, we're not we're not sponsored. Bring Eskimo out brothers. the Obama birth certificate. We if we both help eight one two farms. They make more money. We get more money from advertising, and uh, yeah, it's, that's how the circle works. It's cycle uh, of life, baby. All right. Well, I'm not Hakuna mad. Matata. I'm not mad. And I'm you know mad why? for you. Big you, dog's got to eat. You need to stand up for yourself. You know really? why? Thank you. You know why I'm not mad? Because everybody needs to hear about 812 Farms because they're an amazing, they've been an amazing sponsor of ours. Uh, they've been an amazing sponsor of your show, Jeff, at the Jeff Vibert Podcast. And let me tell you why they're amazing. 812 Farms is a two-acre commercial hop farm providing breweries and home brewers with fresh hops, whole cone hops, and hop pellets. They're opening a 250-seat wedding venue right on the farm, so you and your mustard gas boyfriend can uh, get hitched down on the farm, uh, cat. And uh, I can't imagine what she'll walk down the aisle to. Uh, they just acquired. <laughs> That'll be the first dance. <laughs> they just acquired a complete brewing system to open up their own restaurant and brewery, and they're striving to be Indiana's first destination brewery. And their ingredients for the restaurant and brewery will all be grown on site or within a 30-mile radius. So they're trying to give back to the local community. They're not only uh, supporting two local podcasts, but a lot of local farmers. And we want you to support them. If you're in the Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Michigan, Illinois area, please be sure to buy your hops from 812 Farms. Follow them on Facebook if you're not. Just follow them regardless. It's 812 all spelled out, not the numbers. And uh, thanks to our good friend Aaron for sponsoring the podcast. And uh, we hope to have him back soon. So we, I talked to Jeff on their podcast about doing a, a joint episode. I'd love to go down there and do one, yeah. for sure. Uh, our next sponsor is Mart- martinarmory.com. They were founded with a simple goal to make buying a gun simple and affordable. And starting, instead of carrying thousands of different guns, martinarmory.com only carries 25. And what that does is that allows them to focus on providing the most popular guns on the market at insanely cheap prices. And for a limited tr- pri- ugh, for a limited time, <laughs> their prices are going to get even better because they're offering We Are Libertarians listeners free shipping at martinarmory.com. Simply go to martinarmory.com, pick an awesome gun, and enter the promo code we are libertarians again. That's martinarmory.com and enter the promo code. We are libertarians. They're a great sponsor of ours, like Eight One Two Farms, like We Are Libertarians, like like the Jeff Imp- Vibert Empire. All starting from the ground up. We need you to support these libertarian businesses. We need you to uh, support people who are like minded. So please go to martinarmory.com, check out their website, like their Facebook page, and buy a gun, most importantly, because that's how they're going to make their money, and use the promo code WEARELIBERTARIANS. Um, speaking of, we talked a little bit about being woke. Yes, Jeff? Real quick, what was that last sponsor's name? Martin Armory, martinarmory.com. Don't tell them, dear leader. All right, can't wait to cuck them from you, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a... Yeah. Yeah, how that, I'm sure that'll go over well Close with your... your ears while I do our sponsorships. Yeah, exactly. Uh, now... Uh, Anagnos over here, uh, Kat. Yes. We got you woke before the podcast, didn't we? I just can't even speak about it. I'm so my brain used to be this um, small because I'm a female, and now it is about mm, the size of like half a man. <laughs> half a man size. Half huh? a man so my size. size? Brain. Yeah. <laughs> right. Something like that. Holy crap! I. <laughs> it all started last night when my dear roommates asked me if I've heard about the Sandy Hook conspiracy. So I sat with them and watched the two and a half hour YouTube documentary. Um, Not sold on that yet. Then I brought it up to Dear Leader and, you know, we were talking about that and he was like, hey, but have you heard about the Kennedy conspiracy? Sat down and watched about three Alex Jones conspiracy theories and honestly, my, I'm woke. Yeah. So listen, I'm not a I'm not a Sandy Hook denier, nor am I a 9/11 truther. Uh, I just don't I don't buy that at all. Um, but the Kennedy assassination, I'm all on board, and I gave you like a full treatsy on it. I am f- on board with yeah. that. I sh- I ship it. I don't think it's well, conspiracy. Well, what what what? What's the truth? What do you think happened? Okay, so oh god, I I believe that the CIA assassinated both Kennedys and Martin Luther King Jr. and See, Kennedy was a transformative figure. Uh, are, are you trying to tell me something? Yeah. What? Apparently, we're kind of staticky. Oh, okay. Well, I can. I, I do what I can. <laughs> Sorry. Um. So, so I believe that the CIA assassinated the, the John Kennedy because John Kennedy came to a point in the uh, Bay of Pigs where he realized how 
nuclear war was so imminent and he was getting bad information from the CIA and they seemed to be pushing him towards an interventionist foreign policy when he didn't want that. And uh, nuclear war almost took place had it had not been for the leader of Soviet Russia calling him and saying, hey, not for nothing, but I don't want nuclear holocaust, do you? No, I don't. Okay. Let's well, yeah. <laughs> give me a day. Right. <laughs> let me, let me, I, so, I don't want to be too Kat's hasty. Cat's ears just perked up. She heard a holocaust. So. Right. <laughs> sorry, sorry. What was that? <laughs> so I'm back. <laughs> who, who, knew th- who knew that Greg wasn't going to be the edgelord on the show uh, after today? I know. I feel, I, I mean, God, these young kids, they're just, they're hey, angsty I was giving edgelords. a historical song. It was a class educational <laughs> historical song that i wrote i bet it was to yeah. a hit tune it was fun to sing yeah it's like the <laughs> the moses pharaoh let my people go it's just yeah. like that oh i love that one so, so Bible School. methodist so he so he was no fan of the um monetary cartel that is the federal reserve he was going to try and end that he was going to end the cia and he fired alan dulles after the bay of pigs who was the head of the cia and he also pissed the mob off, which helped get him elected by um, <laughs> by vote counts in West Virginia and Chicago. Right, twenty thousand votes changed the winner of that election. Changes Richard Nixon wins in nineteen sixty. Yeah, and so and then he pissed the the union off, unions off by appointing Bobby Kennedy as Attorney General, who was no fan of the unions, and who were so connected to the mob through Jimmy Hoffa with his ties. Exactly, and so. After firing the CIA director, he ends up getting killed. There's a guy named E. E. Uh, Howard um, E. Howard Hunt. Hunt. Yep. And Hunt claims that he was part of the conspiracy to kill JFK, and he was a CIA uh, operative. And Hunt time. was one of the alleged three tramps during the actual Church Commission, the Senate investigation, and as well as one of the he was the guy that he got caught for breaking into the Watergate Hotel. So yeah. this is a guy, and he was the personal assistant to Alan Dulles right. prior to all this. So. In, in high school, we had a type of persuasive paper, mm-hmm. and I forget what mine was, but my buddy goes, I'm going to type a paper on JFK's assassination right. and say he killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> he failed the paper, but it was pretty convincing. No. <laughs> he got me. I was like, oh. so, so, yeah, I was just I, she was asking me a lot about this, and there's also some theories that George H.W. Bush was the one who ran the, he CIA was working operation. for the CIA operation that, that killed Kennedy, and that's why he... He was like bought and paid for, and the New World Order was born out of that. So, but that the the Kennedy assassination is about as conspiratorial as I get. I could see the government at that time being able to pull something like that off, but mm-hmm. the government we have now, if you if you had something like nine eleven and you had hundreds or thousands of people trying with to pull, cell phones in that era pulling right. pulling off the nine eleven conspiracy, <laughs> and nobody's leaked at this point after fifteen years. Like, Anthony Weiner can't it. text a 15 year old girl and keep it private. Right? Right. There's no way of keeping that private. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? You have to really assume that they were so good that the government is so good at cover ups that they pulled that off, which is just, it's impossible. In the words of Chloe and Agnos, because I asked her what she thought about all of this, and she said, Our government isn't that smart. Yeah. Yeah. And I so. generally believe that. The CIA is with the one organization I would say they are exceptionally talented sorry that's us guys <laughs> just checking everything uh sounds good yep sounds great <laughs> i think it's on <laughs> so so yeah we uh that that's that's how i got a uh, little cat anagnos woke. woke yeah so the you Sandy, watched that today mm-hmm, during the yeah, day we watched like three alex jones while you were interning oh yeah while i was interning um doing a lot of work um yeah <laughs> what p- please say the phrase oh sorry I have never been sexually harassed at We Are Libertarians podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Or the, um, or the other place, which don't mention. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's just so interesting. So many people, um, especially my age, who don't know much about politics, you know, th- these conspiracy theories have kind of leaked into the mainstream media, like these sources, you know, Alex Jones and all this, especially when it's published on YouTube. So it was just funny to see all of my, like, college roommates talking about these things that we talk about on the podcast you guys believe in justin bieber being a lizard person no, okay seen i've seen that one but i believe that avril lavigne is dead and she was replaced yeah, by I, do, I believe that for sure you you uh you also have some taylor <laughs> some taylor theories too. i can't i cannot talk about that on air because i'm actually afraid she would kill me tate off swittler i swittler? need to know <laughs> she uh-huh. is so right now apparently okay. i have to explain it uh, hold on apparently tumblr is 4chan for girls <laughs> yes. yeah 
but the conspiracies aren't like Boston bombing people. It's Taylor Swift is a lesbian. It's like celebrity gossip Insane. and conspiracy theory. So I made a Tumblr account, and I and I'm I have to say this, me because hang on, who do you follow on your Tumblr? Do you only follow Taylor Swift blogs? Yes. I only follow John Mayer stuff on my Tumblr. <laughs> okay, perfect. He's not kidding. Bonding. <laughs> perfect. Oh, and motivational quotes when I got really depressed one time. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one time. Uh, Word porn. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. No, but uh, yeah. Went to a Taylor Swift concert, thought she was great, um, and they always talked about how she went on Tumblr a lot, and she used it to like interact with fans. So I was like, all right, I'll make a Tumblr, and I'm scrolling through, and I find this dark rabbit hole of these like 13, 14-year-old girls who are convinced that Taylor Swift is a secret lesbian slash bisexual woman who has dated like her best friends who are girls and it, so some of her songs are about them instead of guys and it's all this big pr cover up like fake relationships which it's true celebrities do fake relationships for publicity oh, jeff absolutely. you know all about that don't right you? yeah so <laughs> i fell down this like deep rabbit hole and i was at the day job for like two hours we sat and i showed him these girls i kid you not at the day job at the day job. she These, she the night before had prepped me with uh an hour and a half two hours of text messages too to get him ready but here's the thing is they had <laughs> pictures they had dates they like these girls hack into taylor swift's like private jets like logs and know where she's going like they track her jet i'm not even kidding 13 14 year old girls do this I'm not even kidding. Yeah. So they, yeah, and you don't have to hack it. That's published, like the actual traffic. You know, the okay. Air, well, they find it. Yeah, which they, I didn't. They, they request it and look it up. I didn't even know. That's insane that they get the number and they, you know, the what flight I mean? number. Yeah, and track it and take off. So some they landings. track her jets. They like do put together like collages of all the paparazzi pictures, and they've created all these investigative conspiracy. journalism. I'm telling you, I'm like these kids are impressive. And after like three hours of just sitting there reading it, because I fell in this hole, I was like, I'm 20 years old and I'm somewhat college educated and. They've got me hooked. Like, I believe this. <laughs> it's crazy. It, it, I mean, Greg, it, it is that way, isn't it? It's like you start falling down these rabbit holes of conspiracies like Pizzagate, and you're like, there's some validity here. I can see well, this. I mean, well, I mean, with with Pizzagate, the big thing is the former Speaker of the House, Denny Hastert, is a convicted pedophile. Right. So it's a little bit, it's a little different. Like, the fact that there's more than likely a Washington, D.C. pedophile ring, and then his former <laughs> right. staffer just got arrested last year for pedophilia. I mean, that isn't. A big leap, and there was even in uh, England. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Do you know who Seville, I'm talking about? Seville, Seville, the yeah. uh, Seville case, where he talked about how if this ever actually went down, the exposure of the highest levels of society mm -hmm. would be exposed for pedophilia and you know trafficking of young kids. So, like that was a little different. Since I can't, <laughs> Taylor Swift's never been arrested for bisexuality, and right. you know I, I can't speak to the validity of these claims. Well, and <laughs> here's the thing that's crazy: is everyone is like. Ever, a lot of people think, oh, Taylor Swift is such a business person. And savvy. She's savvy. She's got her hand in everything. And, you know, her management, her PR team is so good. So, like, low-key, sometimes I'm like, I don't want to speak out against her. I might get killed. <laughs> or worse, <laughs> never allowed to go to one of her concerts again. You That's know what true. I mean? <laughs> then you can't go and ugly cry with Chloe. I can't, right, exactly. <laughs> but I just fell down this deep like whole and it's just that's insane. what happens like that's what happened with me like with the sarnev brothers like the shooting like, oh yeah that's because like put they put all the pictures together anyone that was at the boston bombing right that's how they identified the sarnev brothers exactly. is they put the pictures together from all the social media and then they identified the guy before the police had and the fbi had uh, based on the backpack and they had the witch the witch hunt and they like misidentified yeah they misidentified people. that's the danger of it but at the same time they found you know where who it would, they winnowed it down of who would have had the backpack and who placed it there well and it's oh, Go ahead. Sorry. oh i was just gonna say you know the taylor swift thing is silly and crazy as that may be it all kind of goes into the topic of we really don't know what's going on like there's so many things the lizard people the lizard people but there's so many things you know like the jfk thing or or the topics we're going to talk about today you really don't know what's going on jeff it's are crazy are there any conspiracy theories that you believe in that you know are just like if anybody knew that they think i'm crazy but i don't care i believe in it i legit think justin bieber's a lizard person really his eyes I've seen spliced at the airport and everyone saw him morph into a lizard. What? <laughs> Every yeah. <laughs> Every everyone. Just, yeah. There, like there was like a hundred people there waiting for him to get off his plane and he morphed into a lizard in front of eighty people and they all went nuts. <laughs> and there was like video of his eyes like shifting. Oh, that's weird. He's I, a he's a legit lizard. I believe for real. I don't believe the Taylor Swift one, but I for <laughs> just please don't hate me. But no, I for <laughs> she thinks that Taylor Swift listens to this podcast. You don't know. She has a Google I alert a set up, so if you put it in the title, hey, I feel like she voted for Gary Johnson. Not gonna lie, <laughs> I think Taylor Swift is libertarian. Well, but, you know, lesbians. 
They love Subaru drivers. <laughs> they do. They no. have a Subaru podcast? <laughs> Listen to that. Um, I definitely believe, yeah, that one, no. I definitely believe that Hillary Clinton has, like, Parkinson's and is, like, dying. Oh, yeah. Her and like her security oh yeah, her guard seizures. Well, like she wears seizure glasses. So. And her security yeah. guard was a full medic drained. Like, oh come yeah, on. her exoskeleton that she wears. <laughs> she's a lizard person too. No, she just has no. Kuru. She's not cool. She's enough. not a lizard person. Because well, have you ever watched the Alex Jones documentary where he infiltrated the Bilderberger Society? We didn't get that far today. I said her the link. Or Bohemian Grove. I, oh well, I, then you're gonna feel way different about Hillary Clinton. Really? I mean, Colin Powell sitting there speaking in tongues, and it's a mock ritualistic sacrifice of. Uh, a child a baby that they pay to have made each year and it's an old yeah. canaanite like uh, early jewish tradition they praise moloch and offer a child sac early jews oh, like the first no. jews had ch- child sacrifices yeah. part of their tradition you're gonna be so woke after watching all those documentaries really? i sent her the bilderberg one i sent her the um the, a new world order <laughs> uh a new world order defined what was the, it was an alex jones documentary on the new world order um the Invisible Empire, that's what it was called. Which the Deep State. I, I liked it. Yeah, that outlined all the banking and Deep State and all this stuff. Uh, JFK 2, mm-hmm. the George H.W. Bush connection, that one's pretty interesting. The Invisible Empire is also another name for the We clan. Are Libertarians. Oh, <laughs> the Clan. I was going to say the Clan. Oh, just right, right, right. Uh, what an, <laughs> we co-branded that, with the yeah. Clan. <laughs> no biggie. Here's, here's the thing. I like Alex Jones is not somebody that I believe or, or think that he's a credible person. Uh, but I love listening to him. I love entertaining the ideas of conspiracies. And it's so funny because if anybody brought up conspiracies on this podcast, like if you go back and listen to the 20s, there's an episode called Bad Chords, Discords, and then the next one is called The Fight, like 23, 24-ish in the episodes. It's where we are talking about fluoride in the water, and there's literally a fist fight that happened because we weren't going to talk about conspiracies. And now we're sitting here going, yeah, I believe that Justin Bieber's a lizard. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just... Well, this podcast has really gone downhill. I don't know if it's just I'm more... <laughs> Once I'm, I started... But I... Well, I think the reason is that I, A, I don't care as much what people think. Like, they're just going to think whatever they think. And I think, Jeff, you probably better than anybody can just... It can explain this. Like, you... You can't control what people are going to think about you. Like when you're when you're doing your videos and you're doing very high level stuff at Barstool now, you know, it, it, people just kind of it doesn't matter what you say or how you say it. People just interpret you the wrong way. Yeah, uh, I for me, I have my demographic. I know who I'm doing jokes for, and I mean, I'm comfortable with what I'm saying and who I am. And you're gonna have it's always a demographic usually guys that hate what I'm putting out there. And right. it's like, yeah, you're going to hate it. I, I, not everyone's going to like you. So you just have to get used to it. And Greg, I think, you know, when we post stuff on our Facebook page, like as much as I appreciate getting that large Facebook page and we now have 87,000 likes on Facebook, um, it has changed because it doesn't matter what you post. It's a Rorschach test. Absolutely. I mean, people are going, really what it is is people can't wait to give you their opinion. Right. They're not going to read it. They're not going to take the time to digest what you said. They just want to spout off and imprint upon it what they're already thinking. Anyway. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. I mean, I, as long as it, and it doesn't bug, doesn't bug me. It's their energy and effort they put into it. Right. You, you know? getting mad. I'm yeah. getting rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You wrote all this text. Yeah. Do you remember that GIF? Or that GIF? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it's now it's just like, yeah, I watch uh, conspiracy documentaries. It doesn't mean I believe them. And I think that's part of the problem that's going on. This is like with the Megyn Kelly thing, which, by the way, the Megyn Kelly interview was as it was like they were mocking the old Lori Kilmartin Daily Show interviews where they used to do her in soft lighting and the other person, they'd make him look like an idiot in like dark lighting. <laughs> And it was like, and that was a parody of the news. And it's like she was doing a parody of a parody. It was so bad. Alex Jones was so poorly lit. He, he was, was sweating. He was sweating. <laughs> he couldn't get his points he out. Took that third, uh, that third dose of super, super male vitality. Right, and he was like, just ready to burst out. It was just so. It was a bad interview. It was so poorly done. None of it was based on fact. What Every are, everything was. Oh my god. Got a close up on that hair, girl. You being crazy. Ch- check that hair. Cat, well, how does every time I check my hair, people yell at me. <laughs> Cat, how does my lighting look? I feel like they're going to give me bad lighting. Jeff's got just some shadows on his face right now. I'm nervous. You're fine. Um, 
I'll, I'll go and edit if if the people are. We're doing a test live stream to our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group for all our fans that you can find at WeLibertarians.com, and we're doing a test uh, live stream. So uh, d so go and watch that in the Facebook group, or we'll post it later on uh, YouTube. So the Megyn Kelly interview with Alex Jones was really atrocious. I mean, it was a bad interview. I don't know why he did it. He she made him look exactly like we all knew she would make him look. Which oh, is she wooed him. He, which is know. who he is. He's crazy. But, I mean, that's the thing is his demeanor's crazy. His behavior's crazy. He's absolutely, like, manic in all of his, um, like, mannerisms and quirks. Right. But if you go and actually just take – it's a lot of – you know, you take away everything like that. And all you ask are what questions is he asking and what are his actual points. If you go through and look at it, like on the Sandy Hook, he's not a Sandy Hook denier. He simply raises questions that were never addressed, and the fact that he raises the questions, it's well, it's hurtful to the kids. It's hurtful right. to the parent people that lost. Asking the question, asking for additional information or clarification on the information is an act that we can't even allow because of their feelings. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that that isn't right at all. Their feelings are not a – you don't accommodate that in order to – you have to get the full story. You have to get the facts. And investigative journalism doesn't do it. He right. does. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you leave open that window of interpretation, all it does is fuel the conspiracy theory. When I mean, you don't give a crystal clear answer, and it, and there is room for indecision or ambiguity on something, a vacuum exists, and it's only natural that a conspiracy develop. Does investigative journalism still exist? No, no, not. I mean, there there are some, but I think it is the closest to investigative journalism that we have now are leakers the intercept yeah. people like yeah people like the intercept to get government secrets from people like edward snowden and then and then interpret it for us and but, that's and they face the hardest time in the world even trying to get uh sp ad, ad sponsorships you know glenn greenwald was the journalist at the day, uh uk telegraph right or, right is that right or di the uk in or the independent or the guardian sorry the guardian I swear mm -hmm. somebody just walked in the door yeah i'm kind of scared i'm kind of scared jeff it's if it's taylor swift you go Nope, no one's there. All right, okay. Marco. <laughs> Unless they're hiding in the laundry room. Uh, it's like it's like uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> they're here. They're gonna black bag us. No, Taylor Swift is here. She heard me talking. Her she was watching the live stream. They're gonna kill me. Um. So. So yeah. Um. Free speech is obviously one under of the, assault. Under assault, and that's one of the things that we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, we had a case that just took place in Massachusetts. Yeah, Massachusetts. Where Massachusetts, uh, Michelle Carter encouraged a friend of hers to commit suicide. She just has been charged with what? Greg? Involuntary manslaughter, 20 years in prison. But her legal team is going to uh, appeal it because it takes, honestly, it takes the law in a, of involuntary manslaughter and um, the intent, or there is an intent, but the implications of where this leads are huge and enormous so they're going to appeal it and my guess is the appeals court will strike it down um because you're essentially saying that being you know what had happened was this is what had happened, what was, had happened was let's let's back up and give some context what exactly happened in this case yeah so michelle carter young teen she had uh, struck up a friendship online virtual relationship with a guy named conrad roy the third and it was basically just them texting back and forth for a number of years. But Roy had been suffering from depression. And at the beginning of their relationship, Carter had urged him to seek treatment. You know, okay. so when they, they were first became friends. However, as the relationship uh, got, you know, progressed, Carter became to uh, she eventually just began to encourage Roy. Um, every time he expressed the desire of to take his own life, she started to encourage it. Mm -hmm. Right. And was like, you know what, just go ahead and do it then if you feel that way. It sounds familiar. Uh, ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, Roy called Carter as he sat in his car in an enclosed garage with the exhaust running, and Carter um, did little to to lend a hand of support to her desperate friend who had called her and said he was going to be killing himself via right. text message. And so instead, when he called her and told her that he was scared, and she instructed him to get in the back of the car and finish what he had started. That was her last communication. It's a very vivid things to say. Right. Hey. No, that's not <laughs> no, true. No, 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 no. Cat, what is hanging on on the wall of my office? One of the funniest things I've ever seen. Um, not for the faint of heart. There's a little post-it note that's 
thumbtacked onto the uh, cork board and it says do it period with a razor blade taped to it <laughs> <laughs> given to me by none other than jeff Vibbard. it goes back and forth it goes both and ways. i've like oh, taken yeah. i've like taken it off and pretended to use it to be um funny and i actually almost got myself <laughs> yeah it's so real well, it not only four episodes ago you were telling people to go up the stream not across the river do it like a real person <laughs> I'm never getting a real job. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so what's really going on is we joke about these things and we're sort of like the first people to find the most, we're right at the cutting edge of what is funny or right. what is edgy or what is right. just starting to become acceptable. <laughs> like This I, uh, is out ahead of the curve and regular society is being introduced to it for the first time. Right. Because yeah. we make these jokes, you do these, you leave little yeah. love notes to Spangle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Jeff and I- Signs of affection. <laughs> right. Jeff and I tell each other to drink bleach at least once a day right but, but uh, it isn't real but this also the context of this situation is different yeah yeah plus if, if spangle's been in a vulnerable state before and i've i've given him a shoulder to lean on uh, right. you even left him a note don't kill yourself yeah you tore it out of a yellow legal pad and wrote thank on you it. yeah <laughs> jeff jeff's been low too he's been eating out of dog bowls and nothing but refried beans for weeks on end and you know <laughs> that's not a joke either. that's not a joke yeah the last time he was on this podcast there was a rant that we were all a little scared weren't we uh, it, it was awesome. It was, it was great. It was great. Just stream of consciousness, letting it out. He felt a lot better after Needed he did that. It. Yeah, it felt yeah. real good. Now he's in a much better place. And now it's a totally different person. Is that why I have a list of things I'm not allowed to talk about for legal reasons? <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> mm. Jeff sexually harassed us. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Natalie Stroanagnos is watching. She says, Hi, cat. Love you. Oh, who's mother. That? Who's that? Oh, your mom? mom? Her mom. She must be so proud. Honestly, you're she's on a libertarian so podcast. <laughs> Hello, mother. Love you, too. Natalie, if you see her uh, trying to brush her hair several hundred times during this podcast, that's your fault. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or at least she blames you anyways. Yes. I so. like to look good on camera. Um, but no, this definitely hits home for me, this whole situation, <laughs> because as I shared before, and you laugh, I was a part of... I was oh, heavily, put it on me. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Project on me. Well Projecting. done. No, I was heavily involved from 14 to... 17 in this like online gaming community i'm a big <laughs> no i'm you what, laugh i'm being honest what game uh farmville please say farmville yoville actually let's be real yoville one of the facebook games you can talk to other people club minecraft <laughs> club all these i'm not even kidding some of my best friends to this day are from that community did you know but, hang on did you know spangle has two facebooks one for himself and one for farmville i kind of yeah. figured as much facebook I games had, in general. no i had multiple accounts for yoville i'm not even kidding i was i was a billionaire on that game but anyways, I digress. Is it's that is that on your resume? Order. I was little. Okay, anyways, back to the Skills. serious notes. I so many Honestly, you should just fucking kill yourself, loser. <laughs> Honestly, like <laughs> No, but so many kids on that in that forum. online com- forum whatever were so mentally unstable. Mm-hmm. And teenage kids. I'm not even kidding. And it's sad cuz like we were talking about earlier, you go to those places for like the sense of community, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so many i knew so many kids from those forms all across the world i had a friend from syria and everything who just wanted to kill themselves wanted to do all these drastic things and people would talk them out of it and stuff so it was a good place but it's just interesting to have this go finally go into the mainstream it is and this is society's first introduction to the savagery that exactly. goes on on the internet <laughs> yeah the inter- b- knows b is not a place for your you know normie 4chan b random yeah the internet is the wild west it is not even anything Reddit. goes and that's the thing is I advocate for free markets and not restricting society and humanity whatsoever. And then there are days I get on 4chan and I'm like, I'm kind of a statist. Yeah. I kind of <laughs> think we need some regulation because these people, they're I don't know. Yeah, they're a little wild. It's like having a society of nieces and I'm outnumbered and I don't know that I like that. But I don't know. I also feel like there were some more elements at work here as they check the comment stream um, on Facebook to see what the feedback is. And I wonder time. if anyone's <laughs> telling us to go kill ourselves. <laughs> right. So many. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> 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 but uh, it is there. Need, I think there does need to be. This was a, a such a sensationalized news story. Like it came out of nowhere. She got twenty years. The sentence of twenty How years. How old is she? She's, she's like. Uh, I want to say she's seven. No, that was something different. I don't know her exact age. I'll look it up. But she's a young girl. Her whole life's ahead of her. Yeah. You know, this just seemed to be over the top to me. Um, let's see. In 2014, he killed himself. So this has been in tri- you know, waiting to go to trial but for a But we're just while. not hearing. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't say her age, but definitely something where it, it had been a long virtual relationship, they refer to it. And then also, it clearly, 
I, I don't want to imprint this on there, but it seems like it was something where he had threatened it and threatened it and threatened it. She eventually just like kind of fell out of touch with him and was wishing he wouldn't keep using this to draw her back in. And then is the door open? Yeah, go shut the door. Uh, I think the door's open. Oops. So it's kind of like a boy who cried wolf. Or dad, or like, you know, I don't know. I don't want to assume this, but something where like he was like kept threatening it and then he was in love with her and that was the only way he could get her to like respond. Um, Greg's totally thrown off. Sorry. No, but I mean, that's that's the vibe I got from the Mm -hmm. nature of the text exchange. Yeah. Is it something where. Suicide. uh, (laughs) (laughs) Um, And so it just got to the point where she was like tired of him using it to bring her back. And so then she just said this, but then when she found out that he actually had gone through with it, she immediately called her friend or uh, texted had texted her friend and was really worried, and that was introduced as evidence. Yeah, I mean it, it could probably strikes a little bit of emotional manipulation. A lot of times people will take advantage of you know suicidal talk just to. It's part of the reason that some people will uh, open up about suicidal ideation is that. They want attention. Right. You see it on Facebook. Like we've had, I had an instance with libertarian brutalism where there was an individual who was like r- real time cutting themselves and taking pictures. And like my first experience with it, like no one had his contact info while he was doing it in the group. And so like I went on a mad search to find anyone that knew him like, and to get them to call him or contact him. And then, you know, the next day, oh, he's fine. He just had a rough night. And it's like, <laughs> that was my first brush with it. And I thought, this is just madness yeah you know and it's interesting because like i said this is like we were saying it's just now getting introduced to the mainstream world if you think about it the online community or just people who communicate more over technology than in person tend to be more you know alone lonely mentally socially isolated socially isolated so of course that's going to make them more suicidal, right? Absolutely. Jeff, yeah. Jeff, stop crying. We're not talking <laughs> Sorry, about you. Not okay. you, buddy. But it's just interesting because, you know, to us, this is like for me being in these things and the jokes that we make, that's a normal thing. Is I've had a lot of people tell me like, oh, I just can't do it anymore. And, you know, you can only talk people off the ledge so many times until you're like, what am I supposed to do? Right. And usually it just doesn't t- develop to the point where then where you're like, actually, yeah. I'm so annoyed. Why don't you go ahead and drink? Exactly. Bleach I, yeah. I, f- I feel like in this case, you have a millennial world being judged by old people that don't get it. Like, right. you know what I mean? And I think it's not even, I mean, I would say it's like people even like 35 and up. Yeah, no, for that sure. Are just normal. Yeah. yeah, like it's nor- it's thirty five year olds unaccustomed to the absolute brutal nature of the h- most hardcore parts of the internet. Yeah, because it is it is not- that headline. Like as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh <laughs> my god, this is going. I'm um, luckily it didn't get the uh, mass outrage of like a Casey Anthony, but I thought someone just took like an archived post on B and then threw it up into the Boston Globe. And that is, that is no society is not ready for that. Mm -hmm. They can't believe that exists. And this, and especially this girl, you know, sweet, cute girl. Like you don't expect it from her. Like this isn't the one, you know, this isn't a basement dwelling, you know, zit riddled cretin. Right. This is like just a girl that would, you guys would probably offer a bid to in your sorority. (laughs) Yeah, especially right. now. <laughs> Careful about the thumping. Um, so, on the table, just gotcha. because of the the mics. So, here's the thing. All right, I have had a long battle up until. I mean, I really struggled with suicidal ideation, which is thinking and talking about suicide, my entire life. I never would have gone through it. I'm much too vain for that. I wouldn't want that to be the thing that people remember me for. You know, like, if you kill yourself, that's what people remember you for. They don't remember that you were a podcast host and much celebrated uh, as the said podcast host. (laughs) The vanity of legacy (laughs) is the deterrent to suicide. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) It's just funny to hear that it said out loud. Uh, That's that's Not that it's funny. It's just it's funny to hear it talked about in that manner. Not that your mom would walk in and find you. It's that... uh, Well, that was... was there's the th- three things. I mean, it's. It, it, I I don't mean it in like a public sense. I mean it is like that's the memory that your family's going to deal with for your entire the rest of your life. They're gonna have to a- have that conversation with people. Right. It's like, a selfish I, thing to put it's on a very your family. Selfish thing to put on your. You don't give a shit. You're dead. You know. But to do that to other family members, I would never want to do that. I never wanted to be found by somebody like the. You know. A, even a police officer who deals with that stuff every day, I wouldn't want to do that to somebody. Like that's a scarring thing. Right. And you know, in the in 
20, 2016, 2016, I sat down and I was very serious about it. It was a, it was last year about this time. And I wrote a suicide note and I got halfway through. And that is the thing that made me realize that I will never commit suicide because once I started to write out all the things that mattered to me, that's when I went, why would I ever kill myself when I have so many great things going on in my life and so many people that I enjoy and so many relationships and projects and things that I care about. So I've struggled with it my entire life and uh, I've never really talked to other people about it. It isn't something um, people talk about at all. You know, we had a friend who tried to go on a suicide tour where it was a very public thing. And for me, it was always a struggle silently and privately. For this person, it was a public display to get attention. It was attention seeking. A, a, a suicide tour? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. The, just uh, plotting out points on the map and I'm going to travel and then I'm going to just kill myself after this. Oh, this is my final God. farewell. And like, I, I just. Taylor Swift would go on a suicide tour. <laughs> She literally just pushed Vibbert off. I'm stronger than you, Vibbert. <laughs> oh, bring it on. <laughs> T-Swift's rage is <laughs> <laughs> And what, what that really was about is I want people to show that they care about me. And I, I pulled this person's partner aside and I just said, listen, I've dealt with this my entire life. The people who commit suicide don't talk about it. Yeah. They're doing it because they want you. They don't know how to say, I need help. Help me. They're doing it and acting out because they need help. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, it's it, it's important for people to get help, but it's also important that people who are who are struggling that you don't use that just to be a, 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 an emotionally manipulative prick, right? You know, and that's I, I you know you you never want to the boy cried wolf, you know, but and it, clearly this guy she felt terrible when he actually went through with it because she was at a point where it sounded like he, she thought he was crying boy cried wolf don't leave me I, and i'm imprinting that on that's my read of it oh, and that okay. may not be the case but like that seemed to be the development of the exchanges was right. there she any had grown tired of the con like you know it was like the exchanges had tapered off and then that came up and then they started the, the exchanges started up again and it was almost like she had grown tired of being reeled back in by, the, had, by the drama and they had met online right it yeah was virtual, online or completely virtual and there again that just shows those people are already susces whatever yeah, susceptible, susceptible. Yeah. still can't speak english to that you know yeah, emotional that, and that yeah mental. the turmoil and then that's what that's the actual like mechanism they use to get attention and like mm -hmm. get the people to talk to them and Feel close they're to others. lonely because they're online. Oh, complete. Yeah, I mean, not all online people are lonely, but, but the people on forums for video games probably. It's a very dark time of my life. Right yeah. Now. <laughs> so yeah, my po my point is that you have to be very careful with this kind of talk. It's not to be used. This kind of speech is not to be used recklessly or manipulatively. There has to be some personal responsibility. You, if you are struggling, you need to reach out for help. Mm -hmm. And there's no shame in asking to reach out for help. But there, there is a difference when you're doing it every couple of weeks. Just you know, people, you know, when you're man manipulating other people, when you're just trying to, you know, flail as a as a form of beta male. I, you know, you know what I'm talking about, betas. Way to get that low T up. I know. My T is so high right now. I had a steak last night. I just went to the gym earlier. I'm so full of tea. Um, well, and I think it's interesting also, another thing that's like another way suicide, I guess, is men mental illness has kind of broken into mainstream is like we talked about before, 13 Reasons Why on Netflix. Yeah, that uh, documentary, that's uh, what was brought up in the uh, one of the articles I was reading is that's just, that is Another the, thing. I, I don't know what this is. Explain this so, to me. It's, I can it's, tell, or... Yeah, you go, ahead. You, you go ahead. Oh, it's a book that was released a few year, uh, ten years ago or whatever, and it, now it's a Netflix series. It's about a girl who kills herself, and she leaves thirteen tapes, and she gives each tape to each of the people who wronged her. So right. she left thirteen reasons why she killed herself. Oh, wow. and they and kept it. Yeah, they made it into a documentary. Yeah, and it's they think that it's romanticizing suicide. At the at the same time, they think it's you know a PSA for mental health, or Netflix is just capitalizing off of it. Um, but it's just interesting that this is broken into mainstream, right? And then now this actual this real case. story has broken in. Also, there's a new Netflix, uh, not even a documentary, a series out. I watched the commercial for it. Don't know what it's called, but it's about a girl who has like an eating disorder. Hmm. And she, have you seen this commercial? It's really dark. The the trailer for the series is her, this girl like counting the calories of her dinner and her parents seeing her at her like mental hospital because she has this 
You know, and it's like romantic. I dropped my putty. It's like they're romanticizing it in a well, way. A, that's a real thing. Like the pro Anna community is oh. what they call themselves. Pro, they're pro Anna. They're like pro anorexia. Right. Oh. And it's, it's a lifestyle decision like wow. being gluten free or that keto. So and it's just, <laughs> And it's just crazy because these big things are, you know, that we've all been accustomed to because we've been online for however many years. And now it's into mainstream and I don't think people can handle it. No, it's a, it's a look at the dark reality. And, you know, the majority of people don't want that exposure to the dark reality. They they would much rather not have to see it, you know, see and experience it because that makes it like the human elements come out to you. And in that in that uh, series, the 13 reasons I haven't watched it yet, but you had mentioned it. it. But I want to now because the thing that got me was I didn't realize like that she didn't leave a suicide note to her parents. Nope. They had no idea what happened. And so yet she had left these to all of the people who were sort of instigated her decision to um, kill herself. And then, though, it continues on and looks that all of these individuals were actually dealing with their own issues, right? issues and, you know, desires of thoughts of suicide and ideation. It was like I said, and I've said this before, but it's. I had mixed feelings about it because part of me, like I'm a very, I consider myself a stable person, but it brings you and it's for anybody and it just brings you to a dark place because it's so upsetting to see like on camera. And so I can't imagine, you know, there's so many PSAs out like saying, if you are mentally unstable, do not watch this copycats. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. So, oh, I, can't, I mean, it's, it's everything's amplified too because of social media, like with cyberbullying. Oh, exactly. Like these things because it's a groundswell in two seconds. Right. You know, all it takes is you know someone broadcasting this out, and then mm-hmm. one person to comment, "You won't do it. You're just seeking attention." And then in comes a flood of people who hadn't said it, but now feel like they have, they have license to you know continue mm-hmm. saying it until it leads to a suicide and copycatting just like with the new thing out mm-hmm. so so here's is that what it's called copycatting i just made it like just uh, okay i didn't know that was like a real term yeah I, I got what you're saying like yeah. a murder copycat murder yeah exactly yeah. a replica mm-hmm. so i think here's the question for libertarians uh this is a free speech case um the implications of this are enormous but is it mm-hmm. okay because here's the problem that here's where i struggle and i think that a lot of libertarians struggle with it it's clear from reading these text messages. It's just like Christy Avery said uh, on the on the live stream. How could somebody say this to another person? Um, and there is a total lack of empathy in what she said and what she instructed him to do. And there's a case to be made for incitement here. She is inciting him to harm himself. And how can incitement be legal? It's it's the same concept as yelling fire in a crowded theater. You're you're not you don't have the right to say fire in a crowded theater according to the Oliver Wendell Holmes thinking, mm-hmm. um, because that's inciting people to panic, which causes bodily harm, which means that people uh, that that rights are violated essentially. You're 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 threatened. Your life is threatened mm-hmm. because someone incited. They used their words to incite violence. This girl incited him to kill himself. She was apparently the, the the tipping point for him to harm himself. Now, she had also advocated for him to seek help and spent a very long time doing that. Did those weigh the same to balance out? I mean, I would say that context and timing matters. I mean, if she's saying that at the very beginning versus at the very end. She did. I mean, that's the thing is for the majority of the relationship, she's saying, please get help. I know you need it. And right. you've been talking about it. And she stayed in the friendship, you know, clearly lo- long after she had any interest in doing so. But intimacy means that your words carry greater weight and they had a more intimate relationship versus at the very beginning of the relationship and so she's inciting him to kill himself does she not deserve to pay a penalty for that are are words that incite words that are punishable i think it's oh man it's a good question because it, it, for me it's there's like so many levels to that because then it com- it ranges into the you get into the realm of, you know, does it matter? You have to start to p- applying con- circumstantial, you know, circumstances to it, and then looking for what you know, trying to read into something you don't have any proof of, you know, because at the, at the beginning of the relationship they're friends, and he's admitting he doesn't feel, you know, he's dealing with depression, and she's there for him constantly and constantly. Right. And then what she should have done is listen. I have no long. I no longer want to be contacted by you. And she chose not to do that. She stayed in it because he kept threatening it and wanted to be there to deal with it. I just feel like that too shows an element of her humanity 
because she showed that she was someone who was there for him to help. And then when she just made a, a stupid, dumb decision out of either exasper, you, we don't know. She hasn't spoken on it, but because she has just had been tired of dealing with it and feeling manipulated, she just said, do it, do it, you know, go ahead, finish the job. Because if you don't, you know, she just didn't have the adult mindset to how to handle it properly. Right. I, how old was she again when this happened? I don't know the exact. I mean, the girl's in her early twenties. All right, so I mean, that's still a pretty young formative age. I mean, your brain is what is it like twenty four before yeah, it's I mean, done? Yeah, twenty four. Your 26. brain is is done really. You know, mind still cooking, and it's a lot to deal with at that age. Yeah, that's all. That's a the heavy weight emotional it. thing. I mean. Plus, you don't really understand life and death at 15, you know what I mean? You think you're invincible. You can't For believe sure. anyone would kill themselves because you can't imagine death. Yeah. No one in your life's past, you know, usually, or mm. it's, that's really impactful. Right. And I think it's it's so new. It's so hard. I, I, the dangers of it are, what if someone advised her to say that? Who's the real initial source? Mm-hmm. Then is that person just as guilty? This seems like a heat of the moment type thing. This is three year relation, text relationship back and forth. But, but, but I'm saying, the, like, just get in the car and finish the job. Well, he was doing it. He was in a Target parking lot and had gotten a carbon monoxide machine. And he's like, I think I'm going to do it. And she's like, just finish the job. Get in the back. If you're going to do it, finish the job. Get in the back seat and do it. Like, she had just told him to go ahead and do it. And then, you know, it showed that she couldn't believe he did because she reached out to a friend and was talking about how worried she was that he'd actually gone through with it. Right. See, and I heard that she, like, he, like, got out of the car at one point and she said no get back in yeah that's what he was like you know because then he was like i'm not you know she he wasn't going to do it and then she said if you're going to do it do it finish the job is what her exact <laughs> words were <laughs> which isn't normal at all Whew. right but i the, the dangers of, of playing this out are huge it's enormous because it's something where look at george w bush i mean look at a president what your words say what words you use determine the course of history they determine invading iraq they determine the rise of isis is he responsible we can you know we hold him responsible for those things and yet he walks free this girl says go ahead and do the job and he orders the authorization of military force so so to play the other side of this she is not putting the knife at his throat she is not the one that is hooking up the carbon monoxide machine. He is the one that has the ability to make the choice or not make the choice. And so we're it, absolving him of choice for an, a situation where based on mental state. Exactly right. And so you you cannot take out of the equation. I mean, explain the fundamental principle of libertarian is the non-aggression principle. Correct. All right. So explain that. And in this context, so the principle of non-aggression, words aren't a valid justification. Um, they aren't force on a on another individual. It's absolute freedom of speech. Period. No questions asked. Right. Words can never be you or you can never use words as a justification for um, def- self-defense or force on another person. If you view it as self-defense, you're the initiator of force. Had she gone over and put the hose in his mouth? then she would be guilty. But because she used her words, she she's not guilty. Right. And I don't even know if she is guilty. I mean, I feel like we're, there's this there's this overwhelming urge because the person this sounds very cold, but this this it, it's like essentially absolving this individual free will. We're saying that at because of his mental state, he was completely de- dependent upon what she said. Right. And that isn't true at all ever i mean granted you can get to a state of dependency and where of just you know you're irrational and not able to make logical decisions that's why like you get not guilty for reasons of insanity Mm -hmm. but this is this is a guy who is contemplating it and reaching out you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. he didn't have a black a rage blackout where his he doesn't have any recollection of what he like we know when a husband comes home and finds his wife he there are many many instances where that person literally the brain didn't imprint a memory because it was in, so inconsistent with what their actions were this is something where he was talking to someone had decided against it then she encouraged him to go ahead and finish it and do it right and he listened he made a conscious decision right 
it's a horrible thing. I just don't think she should have to serve. I don't think. I think she did a, a moral crime, a humanitarian crime. Mm-hmm. I don't think she committed a legal crime only because if we're going to extend it that far, this podcast could incite someone. The guy exactly. that went and shot the Republicans, if he was listening to a progressive version of this website, then they provoke, you know, the podcast and the news sources he was listening to because he gave them such authority. They are the ones that should go to jail. And if Taylor Swift kills herself tonight, that's on me. That's my fault. So. Right. And then uh, it wouldn't need a trial. Jeff would be tarred and feathered and hung up. And yeah. <laughs> Could yeah. you imagine? Well, Shake It Off plays in the background. <laughs> oh, my God. Of course. <laughs> shake off those feathers. You'd have you so many bitches coming after you, but in a different way. With pitchforks. Uh, I feel like well, these people would be a little younger. A <laughs> little bit. Get your ankles. Um, so does it kind of go against the, or go to the tune of if i told you to go rob a bank and you did it would i be in trouble you would you would serve jail for a bit uh, assisting a crime based off of this logic or in this logic okay so yeah yeah so she got involuntary so it wasn't like this was her intent but someone still died so it's like if the this charge is for people the best example is when you get in an auto accident and kill the other driver mm-hmm. totally un, you know unintentional Mm -hmm. did not mean to someone still died and so justice needs to be served so and extending it to words rather than acts that's a big step huge yeah and And the the implications are enormous it's the biggest slippery slope ever and it's kind of scary so here's i mean the a lot of people say well you know they want to deal in his mental illness well, we don't know if he was mentally ill or not, you know. So you can't say if he. I mean, obviously, somebody who he was. I mean, he was definitely somebody, in a terrible mental position, right? And he clearly had had become. He had become so dependent upon her, um, her thoughts, and you know what she. He was basically dependent upon any attention that she gave him. She had placed such enormous weight; it was like he was at her at her disposal, right. essentially. And that's uh, that's a dangerous level of codependency for anyone, you know. But I don't know that that's that's not schizophrenia, you know. You're not actually having a different personality, or you're not, um, you know, you're not imagining things or delusional. Well, and I think it's with the left now they consider depression a mental illness, which I mean, I guess it is. But they, but where do you go to clarify what do, you know? Just like people saying, "Oh, I have anxiety," or "I'm having anxiety." You're not having anxiety unless you're actually diagnosed. You're just, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the diagnosis isn't even crystal clear is the other thing. Exactly. You so know? that's where I think it kind of goes with depression, too. It's, oh, I'm a little bit depressed today. Well, well, if someone suffers from chronic depression and kills themselves... Then that's mental illness. Are the people who, if it is an outside party that's responsible for it, are the parents that are un- the parents that didn't ever offer approval? Are they inv- Is it involuntary manslaughter because they didn't ever say, you did a good job or we're proud of you? Right. So it... It's pretty dangerous. Yeah, and I know you know some people might say, "Well, that's just ridiculous," but then again, so is the situation. It is completely ridiculous. It was, you know, she said something she shouldn't have said. Mm-hmm. It's horrible, but the the urge for vengeance in this, in the name of justice, through legal ramifications, is not justified whatsoever. Like I get it. I I want to, you know, this is the kind of inhumane act you want to take a baseball bat to somebody right. to get justice. But that's why we have we're, you know, a nation of laws not men is it's to resist the urge for these, you know, primal actions and like this right. these desires for vengeance because if you act upon it, it just turns into state of nature where it's whatever whoever has the ability to enforce their will wins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You do this and you're going to have prisons filled with 15 year old kids and right. right and they were meanie like you know we already have cyberbullying statutes which yeah. I, we shouldn't have anyway well i mean lawyers are going to be the new bullies because they're just are suing 15 year old kids and getting on the money you know what i mean exactly because they know how yeah well, and here's the thing will this go to because i'm sure i'm sure everybody in the world has bullied somebody at one point somebody has been the mean kid oh yeah i haven't <laughs> right except for Bill. um my work experience with you <laughs> begs to differ. Fake would, news. Fake, fake news. news. I would never bully you. So I think it kind of just kind of shows what our society is becoming because I remember, you know, in school, if you were, if somebody was being mean to you and you told them, told them off, you were, in, you were accused of being, of being a bully. Right. You were in trouble. Standing up for yourself was it, bullying. Exactly. And of course, this is a different situation, but it makes me think, you know what I mean? It, it makes me, it just makes you think like. 
It does because it it just flirts. You know, you just have this really desire to to want to do exactly what happened to her, mm-hmm. but you had never you you can't you, with the legal the law being the way it is the legal precedent set and this being cited as an example in the next case in the next case in the next mm-hmm. case. It's at a point where anything you say to anyone might be reduced to a lower sentence. Mm-hmm. You know, well, you didn't specifically commit involuntary manslaughter, but you committed indirect involuntary manslaughter. Right. And then you get into the point where it raises the question. Let's say this exchange happened and rather than telling him to go ahead and finish it, she had not responded at all. Mm-hmm. Read and ignored. Read, read receipts on. She had done that. <laughs> Just left him And he ready. killed himself anyway. Yeah. Is her lack of attention criminal negligence that spurred involuntary manslaughter because she knew is there the is the requirement on you for like to be a good Samaritan to this person's in trouble I should be there is that the what we want to force on everyone that's a great point and it's just like the you know we walked through downtown Indianapolis tonight and there's the people begging on the streets like hungry you know if they die of starvation is that our fault are you you're the guilty party because you didn't you didn't either direct them. You didn't do anything at all to direct them to a food kitchen, bring them food, or help. <laughs> shame on you, cat. Right. And so that's the real danger is where will this, this go? is. Th- but she took a, a specific action, which I get. But what's worse, someone saying that to you, or you being so ignored that even your act of absolute like last ditch effort in order to get attention from somebody you want it from goes is so, is so irrelevant they don't respond at all. I would contend that may be worse. Yeah. In a lot of scenarios, rather than being to, you know being told something mean, clearly, then he went ahead and followed through with. I would contend this individual probably would have reacted the exact same way had she not responded. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's then if you want to put somebody twenty years in prison because they didn't respond when you needed them, my God, mm-hmm. that's awful. That, I mean, that's no society at all. Because yeah. that's saying that you have a you are owned by others at all times, mm-hmm. and your attention doesn't belong to you. It depends on whoever needs it. it. I think we have to be really diligent about protecting free speech. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially as we enter the new age. I mean, Jeff, you're working at uh, Barstool. I mean, Barstool is constantly hit with in this environment a lot of bullshit. Especially the the New York office, Dave Portnoy says a lot of crazy shit. What was the thing that you were telling me that he said one time that he was like, uh, "There's some what is it CBS sixty minute interview or something where they're talking about he made a rape joke, right?" And everyone, of course, lashed out and he stood up for it. I mean, he didn't back down from it, which was pretty amazing to see. Yeah, which is one of the reasons that we love Barstools yeah. because guys like Portnoy and Pat McAfee they just go, "Yeah, I said it." He's, I'm not gonna back down. Uh, he's doing what I think the last f- true form of free speech is stand-up comedy, which is kind of under attack right now. But right, uh, he's kind of doing what you can do on stage on a on a bigger stage on the internet where everyone sees it, as opposed to in a theater right that isn't televised so or streamed online. What? So stand-up comedy, I think, has always been an essential part of healthy speech in our country I mean, you go back to lenny bruce although lenny bruce wasn't funny at all no lenny bruce was a huge free speech pioneer you obviously have the seven dirty words you can't say on television with george carlin which was a revolutionary case um and it, uh, what is the environment i mean i hear like jerry seinfeld won't go out and do comedy on college campuses i mean i was just at a show the other day where a girl got offended and she had to message and say, Hey, I just want to let you know, like I was really upset with something you said, like no. it's like what? they're making it. The, and the person that said it was making a joke. Like it was, it was a funny joke, like, right. but they were the butt of the joke and they felt like they were being bullied and they wanted everyone to know that they were upset about it. Like what I, they really felt entitled to again was your attention. Yeah. It wasn't enough that they were offended and then they're just not going to go back and support you. It's that they demand that they, you know that they were offended right. by it. And they feel entitled to an apology at minimum, yeah, or your t- or your attention at minimum, and apo- an apology ideally. So I and a commitment to never do it again. Yeah, yeah, which so, is oppression. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Quit oppressing me. Yes. Uh, so I, I get told all the time it's a running joke that I look like Rachel Maddow, and like I can either get offended by it and be like, I don't want anyone saying that about me, right? Or I can go, 
Yeah, I fucking do. Like, I look at myself in the mirror. I do. Right. I am much prettier than she is. I can see how people get... I can see how people get upset. Like, I mean, because it's just a bunch of people on Twitter just like, hey, you look like... And it's like, they all want to be part of the joke. Right. And I totally get it. Like, if I was 15 or however old this kid was, you know what I mean? Like, or if I was 22 when I first started comedy and this was happening to me, I'd be like... Why is everyone picking on me? I'm like, no, they just don't want to be a part of the joke. It's fine. I'm yeah. comfortable in my own skin. I think a lot of this just has to do with that. And yeah, I think that's that's a huge part of, especially if you're in the media. And I, I don't think a lot of people. I, I, the older you get, the thicker the skin you get. You just go, yeah, I'm not apologizing. I like, said it. I, I think Kat's about to check her fucking hair in her cell phone again. I was checking like, the comments on if, the Facebook Live. Okay, all right. So. Uh, in three years, she won't care. She'll just right. show up and sit down and be like, yep, we're podcasting. I don't care what I look like. Right. It's called giving up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that hasn't happened? It's like, when, <laughs> <laughs> it's like when we were at Sam's Club and I go, Kat, you need to learn to not give so much of a fuck. And that old lady goes, he's right. <laughs> what? <laughs> the greatest moment. We so Chris funny. Bangle. I'm a, I'm a libertarian. I'm a berry enthusiast. Yeah. <laughs> we were at, we were at uh, Costco. We were getting food for the We Are Libertarians pool party. And uh, mm. I, I we were talking about something and she was I was just like, listen, Kat, you need to give less of a fuck about everything. And this just old lady pushing a cart just goes, he's right. <laughs> I haven't had a period since 1943. <laughs> Listen to that young boy. Yeah, he hung sh- whippersnapper. Oh, God. <laughs> That's very funny. Um, it, it, and, like, it goes it goes even further because, like, this was one case, right? Well, then you also have Canada who adds, what do they add? They add gender uh, identity and then uh, something else to their human rights code, which right. is like their evolving constitution. If you miss, and so if pronoun. you don't use the pronoun, the proper pronoun when referring to the trans, it is a hate crime, and so punishable by law for not identifying them with the correct gender pronoun. And if they take offense and file charges, they you are subject to a criminal offense. Yeah, that's sort of what Jordan Peterson, who the two best Rogan podcasts, Joe Rogan. That's what podcast. he's been rallying against. So, yeah. So if I go, hey man, like I always say, hey man, what's up? Right. I could go. They to can jail. immediately go and file a criminal offense against you. Absolutely. They are protected class within their their laws, and it's a hate crime to do so. That's insane. That is, that's in that, and that's the state of, I think that's the state of. I don't want to just blanket say the American left, but like the radical, radical like Berkeley tree climbing liberals, they have yeah. given up. I mean, if you even see some polling, like the youngest of the millennial generation have don't even consider democracy the best form well the the problem is that the people who should be for free speech the left the liberals have a, a large portion of them have abandoned that and have left libertarians ally uh and, and it's more the conservatives now that are starting to embrace free it's speech. just the liberty caucus <laughs> like, right, that's it right. it's justin amash Rand paul and then a couple other stragglers equality has somehow become more important than free speech which is bizarre mm-hmm. to me because y- you can't I-, I mean you can't have equality without free speech cat before earlier today we were talking about the reformation because cat and i we know how to party and so we were watching. Get it. A, we were watching a YouTube video about uh, Martin Luther and the mm-hmm. Reformation. So enlightening! Like, I don't know why I never learned anything about that. <laughs> right, like Martin Luther. School. Martin Luther did more to free the human mind and and free humanity from the slavery that was the Catholic Church at the time uh, by just printing, uh, translating the Bible into German and releasing it through printed text. The power so of the written read, word. Right. So people could read for themselves. Right. right. And then, you know, that's the power of the, that's the power of words, you know, and that, that, that's perfectly, that shows you what words can do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Spoke, you know, written or spoke, but. They can make somebody kill themselves. I'll, right. Exactly. I'll. That's what I mean. Is like, that's the incredible power that, you know, books, idea, ideas are what run the world. And, you know, the thought that, but on this case, it's that, yes, her words were, clearly fatal right they were fatal no doubt about it the question is do you want to go down that rabbit hole do and when we talk about this so often on we are libertarians that you are not guaranteed a right to come home at the end of the day safely and that the world is a rough place and it's much less rough than it was a hundred years ago i mean hell we have deodorant now 
uh the the poorest you know? of the poor in the united states have free f- cell phones with you know paid plans and they have that we 30 percent of food stamps don't go used as a person who's 33 barely just starting to break into the middle class i would say uh i have i have a job i have more food than i need i have a huge variety of food i have health care I have more in my life. I have uh, uh, many, many books, many leather-bound books. Um, I have air conditioning. I two I, cats. I have a better a life. podcast studio. A pod <laughs> fucking cast studio. Right in my own house. An intern. An there intern. isn't. There is no one in the 1950s that lived like this. No. Mm. Henry the Eighth didn't live the way that I live. No. He died of gout or being fat or something. <laughs> I will not have gout because you know you I can go to the percent. you can go to the cvs and get a four dollar solution right that would be fatal to him right my my entire life is better than king henry the eighth who lived like a a king at that time you know but, it's right. relative were you banging as many chicks as he was i was not see no mm. no <laughs> you gotta gout, gout or slaying it with <laughs> raw dog and randoms i'll take gout any day, <laughs> any day of the week. Week. <laughs> i don't even know what gout means Wait, is that when your toes turn green? No, that's gangrene. It's it's like it's like your foot gets fat or something. I don't know. Well, Gats got to fix your joints, and the only yeah. thing that, that cures it are I cherry like juice. I have that. Something and like it's a, it's a it, no. Um, you, it's an inflammation. It's yeah, an, I feel like it's I have inflammation that. of the joints relieved terribly. No, I think you do have gout. Now I'm looking at it. Yeah, I think you have gout. It's like your foot blows up or something. I've seen that. Please start telling people you have gout. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I have gout, scarlet fever. <laughs> I'm cat and I have gout. Uh, I'm cat. I have I have diseases st- that killed better the eight. I would love to come to the podcast tomorrow, <laughs> but my gout is starting to act off. It's so bad. I have a gout flare up. I I tried to get my foot out of the bed, but the gout just is <laughs> not making it move. Obama didn't cover my gout, but he gave me his free Samsung Galaxy. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> it's it's, it's it, gout. I'm pretty sure isn't gout like given the same classification as um oh what's that female thing that everybody has that they deal with like Vaginas. lupus no, lupus and uh <laughs> lupus Ovaries. and um fibromyalgia uh, fibromyalgia <laughs> fibromyalgia lupus and gout unlike fibromyalgia gout is real <laughs> it is real no is lupus it. real because selena gomez has that yeah there's like it's similar of, to fibromyalgia there's like right? a bunch of different types of lupus or something yeah so mm. it's very you the know organic decentralized <laughs> bottom up you know prognosis I have gout. I'm Catanagnos. My name's Catanagnos. I have so much gout. Oh, my gout. I have weak bones. <laughs> I have brittle nails because I have a thyroid condition. Is that That's true? true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so, I mean, it's, it's so funny. So it's it's really so sad. funny that we're having this discussion on whether free speech is worth it anymore. I mean, we had today, who was, um, it was a Northwestern professor wrote an uh, op-ed in the Los Angeles Times. And if you don't care, I was going to read a little bit of it. Go for it. So her name is... Don't care! <laughs> is it, you know, I assumed it was a man. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. It's a female professor. <laughs> <laughs> they don't let them read now, do they? Yeah. Well, and her name's uh, Laura Beth Nielsen, a research professor for the American Bar Foundation. And uh, she wrote in an op-ed, she teaches at Northwestern. Why, for example, did the Supreme Court on Monday rule that a trademark office... Oh, for just for record, the Supreme Court rule... Uh, ruled eight to zero unanimous on a case where a group of asian this asian band wanted to name themselves the slants and trademark it right as a, like you know mocking the racism in it right and the trademark it was contested should they come in and condone allow you know should they deny it or approve it their ability to do it because it's racist It'd be a violate i think of the hatchem well, act the Washington Redskins. What's they they got involved with the yeah, case, okay. and so it ended up being a group case because this group of Asians, this band, wanted to name themselves Slants, and the trademark office wasn't going to allow it because they thought it was you know racist. They were violating another law. Well, time to trademark a new uh, name for the podcast. I'm very offended. Welcome to We Are Cunts. I'm your host. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome well, to I Have racist. Gout. <laughs> yeah, we are gautitarians. <laughs> Oh, but so she goes to she goes she opposes free speech. So she goes in to write for the New York or for the Los Angeles Times today. Why, for example, did the Supreme Court on Monday rule that the trademark office cannot reject disparaging applications like a request from an organ band to trademark the slants as an Asian slant eyes? The typical answer is that judges must balance benefits and harms. If judges are asked to compare the harm of restic- restricting speech, a chair cor- or, cor- or a cherished core constitutional value. 
To the harm of hurt feelings, judges will rightly choose to protect free expression. But it, perhaps it's nonsense to characterize the nature of the harm as nothing more than an emotional scratch. That's a reflection of the deep inequalities in our society, and one that demonstrates a profound misunderstanding of how hate speech affects its targets. In fact, empirical data suggests that frequent verbal harassment can lead to various negative consequences. <laughs> Racist hate speech has been linked to cigarette smoking, high blood pressure, anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Having a podcast. Uh, yeah, all requiring <laughs> complex coping strategies with real-world effects from words. Exposure to racial slurs also diminishes academic performance. Women subjected to sexualized speech may develop a phenomenon of self-objectification, which is associated with easing eating disorders. Right, sugar tits? <laughs> sorry, I have never been sexually harassed at We Are Libertarians podcast. I was talking to Jeff. Oh, Sorry. Yeah, don't assume that he's talking to you. Yeah, how dare you? He's been my sugar tits longer. Did long I just misgender day. somebody? I uh, <laughs> yeah. wasn't paying attention. You, you can suck. go to jail for that. Um, so uh, the KKK can parade down Main Street. People can falsely yell fire in a theater, but they cannot falsely yell fire in a theater, but they can yell the N-word at a person of color. College women are told that a crowd of frat boys chanting no means yes and yes means anal is something they must tolerate in the name of someone else's freedom. I'm in Greek life and I've never heard that. <laughs> uh, you about to. Oh. You don't go to Oklahoma. Uh, I would never heard that. And I usually pride myself on yeah. hearing Be, uh, sexist chants. And I missed this one. <laughs> you're, you're like, do you remember the little cheerleader chants that you probably learned as a kid, as a girl cat? I didn't you know. have that part of my childhood. Oh, I played soccer. Like knick knack, patty whack, give a dog a bone. Oh, yeah. Uh, to like everybody. To right. Rumble. <laughs> oh, I got in trouble because we sold t shirts for IU Bucket Weekend that said kegs, eggs, and open legs, and people were wearing them to classes and wanted to know like who to get an apology for. <laughs> Um, oh god yeah and so they say consider all the protections this woman's basically arguing that the protections that exist on free speech are only for white males so consider all the protections afforded to soldiers families in the case of Wester westboro baptist anti-gay discriminations when the supreme court ruled that in 2011 the church's right to stage offensive protests at veterans funerals congress passed the honoring america's vets act which prohibits any protest 300 to 500 feet from the funerals so these negative physical and mental health outcomes which in Body the historical roots of race and gender oppression mean that hate speech is not just speech. What hate speech is, is doing something. It results in tangible harms that are serious in and of themselves and that collectively amount to the harm of subordination, the harm of perpetuating discrimination, and the harm of creating inequality. She's essentially saying the right, absolute right to free speech is what causes inequality and the real world effects of being told no means yes and yes means anal. <laughs> Sorry. I... This is my senior yearbook quote. quote. <laughs> 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 chirp, chirp. <Right. laughs> but isn't that stunning that this is a Northwestern legal, she's a, uh, she's a JD. She writes a defense of nuanced restriction when it should be done and then says that very words are the cause of racial, racial inequality uh, gender oppression, I mean, and then high blood pressure, <laughs> post-traumatic stress from, you know, your yes being anal <laughs> interpreted as an yeah. invitation to anal be anally raped. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's that's the nature, though. The point was that's what the nature of the American left is. That's what the rab, not even the radical liberals. That's what most on the left really believe. A lot of the Bernie Bros and those types are of this mindset where they've. They have no idea why we have free speech or where that principle comes from and why it's so important. They are like, eh, I guess, but whatever. I would rather, I'm more concerned about these inequalities and racial injustices and gender injustices. So, okay, let me get this straight because I feel like I can debunk this in five seconds. So this professor or specialist, whatever, thinks that people um, who deal with racial, racial slurs, right, have a lower, what was it? They are... So what happens is you can't yell fire in a crowded theater because right. it incites violence, but you can yell the N word and have a public Klan rally at African Americans. And that just because at that moment you're yelling, it doesn't cause them physical harm. The physical harm that follows from mm -hmm. the stress and the anxiety is a real world empirical physical harm. Mm -hmm. And therefore we protect yelling fire, but we won't protect those individuals from be, being subjected to being yelled at. And so, so wait, 
so what about the the effects of positive things? What if something positive leads you to go, you know what I mean? Someone says, hey, it's a great shirt. And then you go have unprotected sex and make a baby because <laughs> you're feeling good about it. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's the implications that kill all of this. So you know, that it's the extending it out past this specific circumstance. Mm-hmm. So she said that because um, these things are legal that those people no, are more it's, it's it's um it's only for like white it's for the majority so free speech is pr- we grant spe- for people that do the oppressing white males we grant them so they don't have to be subjected to being yell- no one mm-hmm. can yell fire but if we ask them to not cat call women so they're not you know they don't get the anxiety or whatever you know right so that's what i was okay so i just heard that one part where she said it was you're more susceptible to anxiety ptsd and- high blood pressure um all the you know all the okay ang- yeah all those chronic anxiety well just gonna debunk that right now immediately my mind went to these places where these like racial instances bad things whatever happen feel like urban poor areas not gonna lie like if you think about like where is the most racist stuff being said you automatically think the d- deep south poor areas of course they're gonna have those you know what i'm saying that's just What's the, what's the argument you like uh, social we prevent them from doing so no but i mean it's just like saying you know people who are from areas where there's more racism prevalent whatever um don't have a high sense of education whatever it's because i feel like maybe that takes place in the deep south where there's not good education anyways you know what i'm saying right and so her point would be we protect them right yeah we protect them we won't protect but and we'll protect them from being from going to see star wars Mm -hmm. and someone yelling fire but we won't protect the black kid in that area Mm -hmm. who's in the school from being called the n-word and all the detrimental physical effects from such right which is where you walk that fine line of once you create an exception to absolute freedom of speech it's real easy to categorize it and characterize it as well we've already agreed that the principle doesn't matter now it's just a matter of degree Mm. And so that's the danger of, uh, you know, creating these little special protected classes and these carve outs. If you don't apply the law and set an absolute precedent, you open yourself up to exposure where she makes a compelling case. Right. Yeah. It's very, very real. I mean, you, you expose someone enough to, you know, hostile yells or being yelled at, you know, the N-word and a, a sense of fear being uh, instilled because they're too young to understand it or what's going on. They're going to develop real world physical effects. Mm-hmm. The problem is we've already... If you abandon free speech where it's not, listen, they have to deal with it and you have to deal with the fire being yelled. Yeah. Then you need to create carve outs for everybody. Well, mm. the, and this is my final thought on the, the free speech will wrap up and then, then cover you want to do health healthcare next time since it's so late. Uh, no, just give, give us a few facts on the healthcare here. Once we wrap up on free speech, I would just say that you, you need to be careful about, we have to protect the free speech of clan members. We have to re- protect the free speech of Black Panthers in the 60s. We have to protect the free speech of every, person every under the single law. person. And the more uh, disgusting and disgraceful somebody is, the more we have to protect their speech because they give the the cover for the government to create the mechanisms that start to erode everybody's free speech. They They are the catalyst for laws being passed to erode our free speech. And so it is incredibly important for us to stand up for people who say and do heinous things if we care about free speech. Because if we don't, we will give the power to the government to take free speech away. Which is the reason why we have free speech is it was a principle that came about after the Treaty of Westphalia, the Thirty Years' War, where the Habsburgs tried to impart their Roman Catholicism over the Germans, the Bohemians, who were Protestants. Right. And so what happened was because the church was the official sanction of the state, it was treason against the state to speak against Roman Catholicism, and you could be put to death. Right. So by making it where everyone had absolute, the only thing that stopped the 30 years war, 30 years of this, of killing, and then treasonous acts by saying, well, I don't believe that the Pope has is the only person that can talk to you know God. And then making by saying that and speaking out about it, a act worthy of death, this is where that principle arises from and why we have it. And so abandoning it to accommodate individuals who, do, you know, who it gives them anxiety is fine as long as you're willing to accept, accept in time the majority saying being able to impose this and uh, put it as a part of law that anything you say, like in Canada, I can have you convicted of a criminal offense. Right. That's the danger of 
I get the the logic behind it, and I understand we've made accommodations, but if we continue to, we're done. Yeah. Final thoughts on free speech? Jeff Febert? Fuck you. See, I can do that because yeah. of free speech. And exactly you're alive. Right. Yeah, and I'm alive. <laughs> oh, damn, those biceps, son. You called me fat at the beginning of the podcast. Now you're saying I'm... Hey. Free speech. Listen, I'm fat, but I have great arms now because I've been working out. They're toned. Cat, final thoughts? Sorry, I was just reading the text messages. They released all the text messages from the girl. Um, Crazy. Um, right? Insane. <laughs> um, Yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah. We're not it, wrapping up. Just oh, on okay. sorry. Yeah. 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 So just on this issue. I was, I, yeah. On the issue, Come yeah, I think everything is a double. There's two sides to every story. Um, I definitely agree, though. You have to pr- protect free speech and stop. Just because something could be hate speech, it doesn't mean that it's... We just saw it turned into law to call me she. I could go, if I, we lived in Canada, mm-hmm. and report you for gender misidentification and be a criminal act. And I think we need to stop. Just because something is hate speech, um, we need to stop making... Yeah, hate speech is horrible, but that shouldn't be illegal. Can I come? Can I you know. come back to me on final thoughts? I was not terrible. I don't condemn it. But uh, still. Yeah, we're not wrapping up yet. We're just no, 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 no. I meant for on free speech. Go, I wasn't yeah. ready, so I just said, gotcha. "I put Spangle down." When I don't know what to say, I just put Spangle <laughs> down. <laughs> right, right. It's my default setting. Free speech. It's always running in the background when I need it. Jeffrey, as a person who is in the public eye, uh, <laughs> no, all the time people send me, "Hey, fucking kill yourself!" Like you're the war. Like you know what I mean? It's like in words of encouragement. Yeah, and it, it, I just don't understand how someone could take it so. Even when I've been in my worst state and I've gotten tweets like that, it's like, I don't know. Uh, it just doesn't make much sense to me. Right. And yeah, that's the point. Is wh- th- That's the thing. Is I can't. I. Yeah, even in my worst state, I can't put myself in this kid's shoes. I just don't get it. I don't understand it. I guess I'm too vain. I'm like Spangle. I'm too vain. Yeah, yeah and that's that was Some the nuance like of this that. case is this guy clearly valued what her opinion so much. Like yeah, the it's... weight it carried was huge. I, I just, I don't. I don't know. I don't get that. I'll yeah. never understand it. I, that's kind of why I've been kind of quiet. I just don't get it. I don't understand it at all. Yeah. When you're as alpha as I am, I don't understand. <laughs> and then you're just you're just some guy with an egg avatar in your shitty Twitter <laughs> yeah. profile. Right. All these eggs. With your Taylor Salty. Swift conspiracy legs. Oh. <laughs> 15 followers. Ugh. Uh, that should you kill, kill yourself. yourself. Kill yourself. <laughs> Honestly. No, but I, I definitely agree. Just it's like. Just because hate speech is bad doesn't mean that it shouldn't be protected. I guess in a way, right? Yeah, it, I can. You can condemn something from a moral perspective without needing to legislate it. Exactly, exactly right. Uh, before we move on to talking a little bit about uh, the healthcare law, I want to thank Principal Propaganda. Uh, I got this awesome shirt from Principal Propaganda. Uh, it's like a lion's head with all kinds of cool words. I'll take a f- photo and put it up on our Instagram. But uh, it's really cool looking, and uh, he's a listener to the show and just wanted to send me a T-shirt, and I promised to give him a shout-out. Uh, Very cool design. Yeah, it's a Teespring store, so if you go to teespring.com and search for Principal Propaganda, they've got a ton of really cool designs. So I wanted to give a shout-out to uh, to our friends at Principal principled propaganda if there's a way if you buy a t-shirt and i know once you see these designs like they're really cool then if there's a way to type in we are libertarians and do that and then uh then i'll make him give me money or something commission or something uh i can't force him i can only persuade him um last night we've been waiting in secret (laughs) the republicans finally revealed their health care bill they've been crafting this in secret i didn't think that they were very far along and i thought they were still kind of doing some deal making with this but it seemed like they had it had it written and they were just kind of springing it on us and then they're going to vote on it next week and try and cram this through and then do reconciliation, which, if you remember the slaughter rule and all that stuff, that's how the Democrats got Obamacare passed. It's really um, the only way to do anything. <laughs> it's the only way to govern, really, anymore. We're, we're really in a we're really in a uh, stagflation type government where nothing is happening. It takes you know the everything they've tried to make everything budget related because it's the only way you can do reconciliation is pass it through the budget like the regular budgetary process. So like the parts that are affected by this aren't a lot of the regulations in those parts. Yeah. So uh give us some of the details. We're we didn't have time to really dive deep into this, so we're just gonna give you some uh talking points so you understand what is in it. Uh, and then we'll have a little bit uh, more fleshed out next episode. But yeah, and it's one of those things, you know, over the course of the week, there's going to be some adjustments. Yeah. Uh, they, they need two 
two can defect from the Republican side, and then they have the tiebreaker and Mike Pence, but they now have four who say they're not going to vote for it in its current form. Right, and the, one of the, the, the holdouts are, gonna, are, you know, as expected. It's Rand, you know, Ted Cruz, Susan Collins with the Planned Parenthood, uh, with the removal of funding for the Planned right. Parenthood, and I forget who the other one was, but um, really what it does is, so the plan uh, gives subsidies to illegal immigrants so long as they're working in the United States. The subsidies are based on 350% of the federal poverty level, not 400%, so it's a slight reduction. It gets rid of the uh, businesses and co- businesses have to offer health insurance or pay a penalty and the, the indiv- uh, individual mandate. So you, if you don't have it, you don't aren't forced to buy it. Um, and then it changes the uh, demand that if you get a qualified plan that you have to provide abortion, so all plans have to cover abortion. Um, unless it's in this, uh, including this podcast, <laughs> yeah. Unless it's to save the life of the mother, um, and then each state will get fifteen or ten to fifteen billion for uh, just in a block grant to cover uh, uncovered individuals that go to the emergency room to right. help offset that cost. The Cadillac tax on uh, really nice union plans is gone. Um, the medical device tax is gone. The HSA penalty is gone. Uh, prescription tax is gone. Let's see. Business owners can deduct Part D expense again. Um, you can deduct medical expenses. Let's see. Up to seven and a half percent of your income, or ten percent of gross adjusted. Tanning tax is gone. Net- tanning tax. Yeah, there's a tanning tax. What? That Wait, was it's part gone. Of Obamacare. It's gone <gasps> under this. We can start. Do you know up. how expensive that was? Oh, I had I an ex of mine. The reason she became a libertarian was because of the tanning tax. Shut it's up. ridiculous. Literally, what instigated? No, it was so expensive. Oh, what so. was the tanning tax? What do you? It was uh, added on to the bulbs. For, are you paying for the bulbs? I don't no, you pay. How much it was it an was. addition. It's like a gas tax. It was added or like on, on whatever it was. Cigarettes or whatever. Yeah, I don't remember how much it was, but I remember thinking like this is a ridiculous. It was a good three dollars to four dollars per tanning. Suntan City has that cool thumb scanner, <laughs> and their their tans never run out. You can. If you buy five, you can use them whenever. I could go back right now and use my tans. I still have like four. Silly. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot your libertarians don't like humor. So <laughs> it's true. Now that Especially it's humor, it's just dumb. Podcast. But yeah, we're just you know we think that those words could be misconstrued <laughs> in order to encourage people to get melanoma. I just love and we don't want the legal liability, and so Jeff needs to go to jail and suppress his speech. I just yeah. love how <laughs> excited Kat was about the tan tax. No. I'm telling you, that was the one that moved the needle for like so many people. That's why I am so pale, is because like you can only go outside so much. <laughs> <laughs> Said the human animal. So the, ah. Yeah, because you're, you're playing your video games. You yeah, can't go outside. I'm, you're in there with your Minecraft all day. Right, right, right. <laughs> Sorry, continue with the. the oh vote. no, I mean I don't. I mean I'm just. It, it's gonna. It's gonna be adjusted because the pre-existing conditions. That's st- that's st- Trump made that promise that has to stay. Uh, Medicaid expansion, where the states every time they enrolled more people in Medicaid, they got like the majority of it was paid for by the federal government, and then in time the cost sharing changed. That's been. Um, that's been or changed. The rollback begins in 2020, and so now it's not. They're not encouraged. It's not going to be uh, matched in the same way. Um, the insur- like what it does is it allow it re- uh, bans you from charge. Like so, you used to not be able to charge someone 52 differently than someone uh, 25 for the same policy. That is no longer the case. Now they're allowed to charge up to five times more because those individuals use more services. Um, so it, what's, what it does is it lets the insurer adequately adequately price the actual cost of insuring an individual rather than spreading it across a big pool uh, in order to it, – what it does is it, it raises or lowers it for the sick and raises it for the healthy. This allows them to accurately reflect, reflect the cost of insuring someone. Interesting. Yeah, which people hate because if you're older, all of a sudden you have to actually pay – because it's not really insurance. like – if you have diabetes, it's not like maybe not or maybe not you'll have diabetes next month. Like you're going to need the same treatment. Right. This isn't. It'd be like saying we're going to, you know, you can't charge someone who gets in wrecks all the times because they got in a wreck. That's just not right. Not uh, according to Keto Bittner. <laughs> Bittner is actually in here. They are not allowing any insurance company to insure Bittner, <laughs> and doing so is a treasonous act punishable by death. Bittner's- Almost as bad as mispronouncing somebody or miss. 
misgendering. Gen- misgendering. And then we may be misgendering Bittner. So what you're saying is Bittner is a pre-existing condition. Like, he is, like but they, they do have to cover being Bittnered. So if you <laughs> if you have the Bittner or Bitneritis, then you um, they Wait, do have to insure you. Is so. Cancer is a pre-existing condition, is that? Yes, 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 it is. Now, the thing is, though, each <laughs> insurance company will have new leeway on how to remove the, the, the cancerous, the metastasized Bittner. Okay. Stage four Bittner <laughs> is going to be very expensive. Itchy Bittner syndrome. Itchy Bittner syndrome, <laughs> IBS, right. is very prevalent. Oh, I can't get out of bed. I got Bittner. <laughs> yeah. Imagine having bit, Bitroids. Where oh. they, are, they are these... Or, Bout S- Bittner doubt <laughs> irritable Bittner syndrome. Sorry, my, Bittner doubt. My Bittner is inflamed. <laughs> yeah, I have inflamed Bittner. <laughs> no. uh. I have type two Bittner. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody thinks this is funny except for us. I know. And I don't even care. The views of the live stream are just down. We're invo- I know we're getting tired because we're in that territory where <laughs> Spangled thinks mocking bi- cyber audio cyberbullying Bittner is funny. He's never gonna hear it. Well, it's no, funny. No. This is on YouTube, so it's cyberbullying. Video, yeah. <laughs> See that? I know how to plug it. But if he you have losing. if you have Bitneritis, you can still get health insurance. Won't you donate two dollars today to help someone who suffers from Bittner? <laughs> you get a nice uh, blanket. <laughs> no, what? you've never seen those <laughs> commercials. <laughs> yeah, with the little guy in the khaki pants and the <laughs> button up. It's like he oh died. god, my mom and I do this impression. He died. Yeah, gout. <laughs> <laughs> with a child, a uh, loving care blanket. You'll help a child like me in need. It's so much more. St. Jude Research Shop Hospital for Kids. Anything else on the healthcare Yikes. laws? Um, I think it will ultimately pass elements that will th- can through reconciliation, and I support it. This is an this is like I said in chat earlier, trying to do pass anything that meets all the demands that are being put on this is like it's like getting a you know finding a unicorn. It isn't going to yeah. happen. So this this is a good step, though. I think it makes it isn't perfect. It doesn't replace Obamacare and. I mean, it does replace Obamacare, and it's a phased-out setting, and it gives a lot of the authority back to the governors who have, uh, you know, if you're a Democrat, if your state elects a Democratic governor and you want the benefits of the existing, you have that option to you. Or if you're, like, in a Republican state, they're going to have the author- more uh, autonomy to deliver, you know, health insurance. So it's kind of – it's the idea, you know, it, it gives it flexibility, which is rare for legislation. Right. All right. Well, very good. <laughs> I feel like we've just immediately run. I've run out I'm of I'm tired. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Done. I'm so tired from. Got, a, then, got an hour yeah. drive back. All right. Funcy. Final thoughts for this episode Gregory Lins. All right, you can start with those two. All right, Kat. Thank you for having me on. I think this was another good episode. Strong performance. Strong performance. I know a lot about. Uh, pop culture the Taylor singing Swift. was the highlight <laughs> that right was great. that was great that good was i'm great. glad you guys enjoyed my historical and educational performance that i made it for that reason not because i don't like jewish people your pharaoh pharaoh let my people go remix right <laughs> but i uh, know thanks for having me on follow me at cat and agnos and people um there's a gentleman who was interacting with me on twitter and the wall guys hilarious so uh Keep up the interaction. The one that we were like, hey, buddy, don't be a creep. And he's like, I'm married. I'm not a creep. Like, yeah, no married guy hasn't ever been a creep before. No, it was hilarious. So uh, <laughs> keep it up. I like the discussion. I like to basically show my college friends that I have intelligent friends. So tweet so me. don't show them this. Yeah, so don't show them this. <laughs> Jeffrey? Final thoughts. Greg Spangle, hilarious as always. <laughs> I enjoy being cyberbullying. The You're, funniest, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suicide, <laughs> cyberbullying, and healthcare. Oh, just all new kinds of content hey, and inspiration. I'm getting to you, Cat. You are very mature. You are wise beyond your years. You are going to be very successful. Uh, it was fun sitting on this podcast with you. Oh, God, he's hitting on her right in front. I'm only saying because I'm hitting on her. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, thank you guys very much for letting me be on here. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Thanks I'm glad you joined us again. Yeah, yeah thanks for coming. Came down to the south side, <laughs> Greg. <laughs> Uh, no, I think it was a good episode. I I think that we did as good a job flushing out the free speech stuff as as yeah. you can, you know, because I, I get the vindictive urge that you know feel satisfied by her sentence, but at the same time, it's not worth it. Yeah, I I think for the free speech thing, they should just cut out your tongue. Don't no jail time, just cut out your tongue. Full ISIS. <laughs> yeah, it's very Roman of you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. 
Thank you, everyone, for joining us here on the podcast. Please be sure to follow Jeff Vibert on uh, all for all your multimedia needs. What was that name? Jeff Vibert. Vibert. Uh, you know, follow Kat and Agnos because she fucking needs this. And, uh, and, and Greg Awful. too. Greg, uh, Greg shares. People funny- message me and I, re- I respond, but not quickly. And I can tell it irritates them. And Why? so I'm sorry, but I don't always respond to messages. You have a life. Yeah. yeah. You don't have time for It's not because I don't love you. Want to thank Shira Newman. Shira donated some stuff from our Amazon wish list that you find at, uh, Aww. we are libertarians.com. She donated, uh, one of those tripods. Oh. Um and uh, and a cord. So you know, if you want to pitch in some equipment, we could always use your help at the Amazon wish list. So thank you to her. Appreciate that and everybody, nice. especially to Jason Doolittle. Uh, he donated the Mevo camera that we're going to start live streaming. Uh, so please, what is happening what over here? What is she doing? <laughs> Sorry, I'm. She's an insane person. We're <laughs> autisming at low. You really are like me. <laughs> she's she's eating things and like sword fighting. Vibbert. I just say I don't know. Thank uh, you for listening. <laughs> and uh, so thank you so much. We're going to do some live streaming soon, so check that out. All right. Thank you, everybody, uh, for being a part of the We Are Libertarians community. We love you so much. You guys uh, make this so much fun. We love interacting with you. So please make sure to send us send us emails at editor at wearelibertarians.com or join the Facebook group and uh, dive in. And as always, please be sure to share this with your friends. And as always, we promise to do better next time.